So there are two types of string harmonics, natural and artificial. Now these sounds follow the same underlying principles no matter what string instrument you're writing for, whether it's for violin or cello, or even guitar or harp. So as long as the instrument has strings, what I'm about to say here is going to apply. So pay attention. Let's start off with natural harmonics. These sounds are produced when a player lightly touches a node on a string with one hand, while the other hand activates the vibration of that very same string. The activation of the string can also occur through plucking, as long as the other hand is still lightly touching a node. Now the location of where exactly you lightly touch this node determines the actual pitch you're going to hear. Keep in mind, there are a very limited set of pitches you can get using this method. But the good news is that it's very predictable what those pitches are going to be. We can actually determine this for each string through what's called the harmonic series. Now I'm not gonna explain in depth what this series actually is in any scientific way. What's important to know is that these series of notes naturally exist on every vibrating string. So for example, if we take a look at the violin's G string, these are the possible natural harmonics that could sound. And in a similar fashion, if we head over to the violin's adjacent D string, we get those same intervallic relationships just transposed one perfect fifth up. Now most of these pitches can be played by basically any trained violinist as long as they are lightly touching the corresponding node that goes with each of those pitches. And in terms of which nodes those are, lucky for you, you don't really need to intrinsically know that for you to compose your piece. But if you want to know, I left the link down in the description below that highlights these nodes more in depth. However, in my experience, I find that it's best to leave it up to the player which note to actually hit. As long as they know what's the sounding natural harmonic that you want, they will find the corresponding node on that string that best fits their needs for that passage. Fair warning though, the higher up you go the harmonic series, the more difficult it will be for the player to execute said harmonic. So please plan accordingly with your player if you plan to use a partial that's say higher than the fourth partial. Okay, so what about the notation? Now with natural harmonics, you're gonna see a small circle over the pitch that you want to hear. Note that this isn't a small zero, it's a small circle. Big difference. A small zero rather would indicate to activate one of the open strings without pressing anything on it. So if you want to hear a harmonic G one octave above the open G string on a violin, it would look and sound like this. And the D above that would look and sound like this. This principle would follow suit all the way up the harmonic series on any string capable of vibrating. Now, once we've understood these principles of natural harmonics, artificial harmonics actually become quite straightforward. With this type of harmonic, we can basically create any high pitch we want just by manipulating the length of the string itself, as opposed to natural harmonics, which are entirely based on what the pitches of the open strings are. So say we wanna hear this A flat as a harmonic. Now there's no way you're gonna hear this harmonic as a natural harmonic on the violin. So we're gonna to need to play it artificially. So what we would need to do is press one finger down on the A flat two octaves below the A flat that we want to hear. And at the very same time, one of the other fingers on that same hand needs to lightly touch the node one perfect fourth above that A flat that you're already pressing down on that same string. Now, if we were to notate this, it would look strikingly different than the natural harmonic. First, we would need to notate the low A flat with an ordinary note head. This is the pitch that is actually pressed firmly down on the string. Then we need to notate the note one perfect fourth above this low A flat. In this case, that would be D flat. But we need to be able to differentiate this D flat because it needs to be lightly touched, not pressed down. The way we do that is to change it to a diamond shaped note head. Notice that there's no need to indicate the sounding pitch, that high A flat two octaves above, like we had to do with the natural harmonic. It's kind of magical in a way because by doing this, we've created a new sound basically out of thin air without having to rely solely on the natural acoustics of the instrument. Now, if you want to hear string harmonics in action, click on over to my second string quartet where you'll hear and see both natural and artificial harmonics working together to create a quasi-ethereal atmosphere. 